to be a little bit about the process from CFD. So let's say you would have to give someone advice on how to approach the CFD case. Of course, we all mm -hmm. know these steps like pre-processing, processing and post-processing. Yeah. How would you personally approach a case? Let's say you have a brand new case, you don't know how to do it. You laid out how you would do it, like step by step, increasing the complexity of the case. Mm. Um, but how would you go from beginning to the end, maybe to give new users an open form who listen to the podcast some kind of an insight of how you would do it? Yeah, uh, something which I've I've actually changed my approach over the last few years from from experience of running quite a lot of CFD cases, and actually as a as an additional step, which I think a lot of people don't tell you to do when you're doing your CFD, which I've now found has been really helpful. Um, and that is trying to solve as much of the problem by hand as you can, mm -hmm. actually trying to estimate for yourself what should the answer be. So, for example, uh, let's say you were doing the very simple case of uh, flow over an aerofoil, for example. You have, have a, a large domain and you've got a small aerofoil in the middle and you want to calculate what the lift and drag on the aerofoil are. That's a fairly standard problem. And the first thing I would do uh, now if I were to solve the problem is just get out a, a piece of paper or Microsoft Excel and try and work out what do I think the solution should be before I even start? Can I, can I guess what I think it's what the solution is going to be? And you can often get quite, you can often get very far by looking at uh, uh, research papers or other people's theses online, actually finding, have other people done this before? What did they get? You might be able to look it up, find a thesis or a paper, and you might find for this particular aerofoil, I'm expecting an angle of attack of eight degrees, the lift coefficient to be 1.2, for example. I think the lift coefficient is going to be 1.2. I think the drag coefficient is going to be this much. Um, this is the solver I'm using. I'm expecting it to converge in this many iterations. Uh, I expect the forces to look something like this uh, and to actually try and work out what is as much of the solution going to look like as possible because that often helps you then in, in the setup when you then set it up and you think, I think I know the forces are going to be about this. I know the temperatures are going to be about this. Uh, so definitely for when you set up your, your monitors, for example, uh, and checking that your case is, is running correctly. Have I got the flow going the wrong way? That's quite a typical one. Which way should the flow go? Should my mass flow be positive or negative? Uh, that would, that would definitely be the first thing that I do. And this, tends to help uh, for, for very simple cases like aerofoils. There's, there's not a lot of information you can pull together. Uh, but when you get to more complicated cases, maybe you have things uh, with uh, with temperature, with with heated surfaces, maybe with multi-phase flows, for example, you, you may be able to work out uh, things like, what do I think the, the heat flux is going to be coming off my object? Can I can I model it? Can I assume it's a cylinder or a, or a cube and then look up in a textbook oh, the, the heat transfer coefficient will be about 10, for example. And just getting an example and try and work out as much of the case as you can uh, by hand first before solving it is probably the best thing I would, I would recommend. 